Hello friends, welcome back to This is the Police. Truckers are unhappy with the suburban roads. Fire at the puppet theatre, two actors dead. <laughs> I like it, that's good. Freeburg Gymnast wins regional competition. Well, what talent? Once again, Paul Cook trying to get off work. This day is going to rain today, and I have a very weak immune system. I'm afraid I might get sick. Can I go home before it starts? I am very close to firing Paul Cook. Very close to firing him. Just pick a random song. Okay, so welcome to day 23, guys. We have a share of something from the mafia. $11,000. Wow. Okay. Holy hell. Attempted murder in the suburbs. A girl shouted over her phone that her grandmother had been killed. Her home. So, attempted murder or actual murder? Hmm. Let's check out the labour market while we have a second. It's as it was. There's a fight in the city centre. A few drunks were playing darts. One of them got one in the shoulder. A fight broke out, which was quickly joined by other patrons of the bar. Well, that's definitely a paddy wagon job. We'll send Purdy, Nordlander, Cook, and God Bomber. Attempted murder in the suburb. The road to the house is strewn with the corpses of drowned dogs. The lights inside the house are on, but the door is locked. Call through the front door, find another way in, enter the house through a window. Let's go through a window. A bleeding elderly woman is lying on the floor of the living room. Check whether the woman is still alive, search the second floor, check the backyard, check she's alive. Oh. Well. We seem to have skipped a few steps there, but sure. <laughs> Is the grandmother alive? Yes. Oh, we caught the killer. The report on the fight. Everyone's happy. Homicide in a residential area. Fiona Kalis was found in her apartment with her head caved in. A meat tenderizing hammer was found next to the woman's body. We're gonna have to take... Don't mind me, just doing a little bit of <laughs> reworking here. We have three cases. So we're going to run with Moser on this one. And we'll put Kodo on that one as well for Shift A. At least until we get a detective case on Shift uh, B, sorry until we get a detective case on Shift B. The Sands need help at the Bank of Freeburg. The family bank just called in a report of a strange man in a leather jacket with fake documents trying to empty one of her accounts. Obviously it's one of Argus' agents, but it's such a stupid move. 
We don't want to get our hands dirty with this. Just lock him away in a filthy cell. Go ahead, Lisa Simpson. Investigation has started on homicide, which is good because we would like to send Kodo out to help with that one. He won't actually help yet, but he'll help come shift B. I apologize I apologize if any of that noise comes through. I believe one of the neighbours is cutting their grass. A suspicious individual in the touch of Dionysus liquor store. A cashier just called in, her voice in a whisper. Two suspicious black men have entered the store. They spent a few minutes browsing the rack with the expensive whiskey and now they're whispering to each other and looking back at me. It looks like they're planning on robbing the store. <laughs> Send out the dream team. Now, we can't actually do anything about this. We have three investigations ongoing at the moment, so the homicide at the business centre it's just going to have to wait. I don't know if it will wait. I don't know if it can wait. But it's waiting. Report on the suspicious individual. The men were unarmed and just doing a little shopping. They were picking out an expensive bottle of whiskey as a gift for their grandfather on his anniversary. Shopkeeper, you fucking scumbag. I'm really glad we sent the Dream Team out there so she can feel really bad. There's a theft at the riverbank. Passerby witnessed three people trying to break into an ATM. A pickup truck was parked nearby, its engine still on, with another man behind the wheel. Looks like they're trying to grab the ATM and carry it away in the truck. Purdy. Nordlander. God bomber. The thought I have had is I could give Cook a stripe in a bid to make him a little more professional and hopefully make him stop asking for every day off work. The theft at the riverbank is more serious than they thought so we're sending out Stovall, Robbins and Grant. The Sands need help. Some punks are throwing Molotov cocktails into the office building where we make book. Eyewitnesses say the idiots keep throwing bottle after bottle, even though the building is already falling apart. They're probably still somewhere nearby. We have everyone out at the moment. Okay, we have multiple reports coming in. New frames in investigations. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything about this yet. No, we need six frames to complete that one. Okay, we may be able to do something about this. So, we have James Duff, the pharmacist. The night before last, everything was fine when I left. I closed up the pharmacy like usual and went home. It was a little past nine. At exactly half past nine, I was at the bus stop that I'm sure of. In the morning, I went to work like usual. I saw, as soon as I saw the broken window, I called the police. Smeed Roby, homeless. Yes, I hung around at night near the pharmacy, but I don't remember much. One guy said to drink for my health and threw a $50 bill in my hat. I had a little celebration. After that, I ran right to the store, but that's all I remember. I woke up this morning and cops were all over. I can't remember the man's face. I was more interested in the $50. All I can recall is the light struck something under his jacket. Something like a doctor's clothes. Carrie Duff, the pharmacist's wife. James came home a couple hours later than regular, but that's not so unusual. The insurance refused to pay for the treatment he needs, so now we're always short on money, and he's always trying to find part-time work. Not that anything ever pans out. He's willing to take on even the most difficult and dangerous work. 
Yesterday, for example, when he changed his clothes, stones and debris fell out. I'm really starting to worry about the hellish jobs he's getting himself into. Slovenko Mavzer, pharmacy owner. Those damn bums who are always begging near my pharmacy are, all, are up to no good. Obviously one of them thought he'd be daring and take me for all I'm worth. Look at the guy, he's barely keeping on his feet. Where did he get the money for all that alcohol? I've never seen anyone even throw him a dime. And Felicia Ding, experienced pharmacist. The medicine they stole is Deprazacaps. It's very expensive, but there's not a lot of street interest, so I doubt it will sell on the black market. I don't think it was stolen for resale. So that would be a doctor throwing the homeless man $50. That would be him locking up for the night after taking everything. That would be him clearing the shelves. And this would be him breaking the window. That would be the bum breaking the window, and that would be the bum with $50 lying in the gutter. There we go. The suspect is James Duff, a pharmacist with a rare skin disease. He decided to steal the medicine he needed because his insurance company refused to pay for his medical bills. Oh, Jesus. Right. James Duff's wife sends him out shopping. What, at one in the morning? James Duff keeps regular appointments with his doctor at one in the morning. We're not going to get people back in time. We do also have new frames for the hospital. So we could quickly skim through this before we move on to the next day. At the moment, the, the recording is only 12 minutes. Simona Rodriguez, pharmacist. I went for lunch at one o'clock, and a couple of minutes later the lights went out. I shut the door behind me. I remember that I bumped into the janitor's cart that was standing in the hallway. Colin Marcus, head physician. I suspect the student Aaron Jones. He's come by the hospital several times in a state of confusion with red searching eyes, dragging his huge backpack behind him, but it never occurred to me he might be an addict. Aaron Jones. I was in the bathroom when the lights went out. The only thing I saw is what you normally see when you're sitting on the toilet. Oh, and then a janitor came into the restroom with his cart. I heard him emptying the bin. Then the lights came on, and I went to the head physician's office for a signature. But he wasn't there. Laszlo Bodnar, the janitor. Yes, I have keys to the pharmacy. I wash the floors there, just like everywhere else. But I don't have access to the electrical panel. Only my superiors have those keys. And here's another mystery. What happened to my garbage bags? Someone took them out of my truck, and I can't find them anywhere. The last frame before the film cuts out showed the janitor going down the corridor, his cart standing near the door to, his, to the hospital pharmacy at time code 1303. That's the janitor's cart and someone walking away with a bag of stuff. That is someone making up a bag of stuff. That's a light switch. That appears to be janitor jamming a door open. And that would be the doctor just unlocking the door. Right, so I think it's going to be Mr. Marcus. Colin Marcus, head physician. Looking through the janitor's store for the keys, finding the keys. Yeah, there we go. Turn the lights off first. The suspect is Colin Marcus, hospital head physician. Okay. So when we get to
Okay. Let's end the. D oh, we need to clear these messages. <gasps> no detective sent to the crime scene. Okay. On. Oh, I forgot about that. Well, it all went well. I'm very glad, to be honest. <laughs> Okay, we're ordering all of our detectives to work tomorrow because we have a lot of cases on the go. Aside from that, I think we're all good. We have quite a stacked shift B at the moment. Day 24. Freeburg mortality rate up 15%. Central library flooded in downpour. And farmers harvest record Farmers harvest record corn crop. <laughs> That's the problem when there are several words in a sentence that could be verbs or nouns. I've got terrible heartburn this morning. Might be better if I go home and lie down. Might not be. Some pipes in my house busted and I need to wait around for the plumber. Can I take the day? Sven Jorgensen. This is your first fucking day of work. <sighs> yes, because I wouldn't be happy if it was me in that situation. If it's genuine. A little bit more sweet ginger green apparently. Cops, oh god, this is another one I'm gonna end up ignoring, isn't it? At a, regional, at a recent regional conference, which was attended by people from our administration, we learned that the governor wishes to lower the average age of public servants by at least five years. The city will most likely be subject to an upcoming review. Please dismiss all senior staff at the police station as soon as possible. Shift B is probably fine, maybe with the exception of Vandal. Share from the Mafia. 4,000. Laundered money. Uh, we'll share that again because I think I feel like we're doing quite well for money at the moment. Right, I feel like James Duff is going to be at the mini market. Uh, we won't send the SWAT team. But we will give you Ozaki and Murata. Colin Mark is probably going to be at work. Port Glasgow, you can take Vandal and Subaki. And you know what? You can take the SWAT team. We'll have the SWAT team descend on the hospital for no real good reason. Assault in the ghetto. We have a full minute to react to this one. A woman attacked her lover with a hammer after he told her he'd been cheating on her. The police call came in from the woman's daughter. Mum has really lost it and I'm afraid she'll kill him. Stammered the girl through tears. Kabilias, Yancey and Shaw. Leaving Kemp behind on her own, but she'll manage. It would be Kemp and Jorgensen if Jorgensen had stayed behind. Check out the labour market, as it was. I really don't want to hire any subpar cops. Anyway, report on the theft. Offender cop, good. That's another 100 points for Bort Glasgow, she's at 710 now. And report on the robbery. Nope. Wrong place. 
Okay. Report on the assault. Defender was caught. No one hurt. Got a fly buzzing around my face now. One second left to answer that call. Ozaki? You go with Kemp and Murata. Two, the disorderly conduct at the Zare Park. Corey Ramsey saw a group of women in the park wearing ski masks, leading two other scantily clad women with leather leashes, shouting offensive slogans about the superiority of the female sex. Judging by their unintelligible cries, the offenders seem to be preparing for a sacrifice. Oh, we could have maybe set the paddy wagon to that. Okay. Well, we've got Vandal and Subaki back for that one. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if these two are perhaps related. I wonder if the pharmacist is now at the doctor who we just arrested. Report on disorderly conduct. We took the offender in. No one hurt. All well. Fabrice Souple at the Sophocles Theatre of Drama. Mr. Boyd was shooting a new advertising spot for a bamboo toilet paper company. In the ad, there's an important role played by a policeman. The local actors over here are only good for kids' stuff. We'll need a true professional. Someone the audience will believe is the real thing. We'd be grateful if you could provide us with some of your best employees. Uh, I don't really want to give you three people, but... Yeah, if you make it worth my while. Report on the robbery. This is the detective case. Offender was caught. Beasley up to 750. Jesus. A theft at Debbie's special cafe. Someone stole a golden retriever belonging to Eddie Goldberg, owner of Eddie's Burgers, while the dog was playing in his backyard. Later that day, regulars of the burger joint said they saw the dog muzzled and led around by two junkies near Debbie's cafe. Ozaki and Murata. Again, we'll leave Kemp behind. Yancey, Sean, Kabilius are off to the advert shoot. The Sands need help. And Fabrice Souple. Oh no. Oh no. Chief, Yancey really enjoyed doing that ad, and the director thought it was so great, he's offering a couple more roles. I think our colleague might even quit the service and go for a career in commercials. Fuck, fuck you, Yancey. $15,000. Buck Yancey. Been with us since the start. 16-2 and two record. Absolute hero of a police officer decided to go shoot some fucking commercials. Excuse me while I take a goddamn drink. Where do you get off, sunshine? Where the fuck do you get off? Sans. <laughs> the kitchen at Debbie's Cafe is hopping busy. Debbie is making sausages for her new brand of hot dogs. When she notices the police, she quickly dumps a dog collar in the trash. Oh no. Shout to all the cafe's customers that the hot dogs are made from actual dogs. Ask about the collar and ask Debbie about her relationship with Eddie Goldberg. Check the refrigerator. Defender was caught. Oh no. She was making hot dogs with dogs. That's... that's harrowing. Somehow a whole army of armed punks have seized the position on one of the fields at the ranch. Obviously we're going to have to drive them off by force. We've already got some men together, but some extra help wouldn't hurt. Vandal, Tsubaki, Kemp. 
off you go. Reckless endangerment at a veteran's house. Is it a veteran's house or the veteran's house? Hard to tell because they never they didn't use a single apostrophe anywhere. An elderly veteran is dragging around a bag filled with captured weapons, all loaded with live ammunition. He says he's trying to demonstrate battlefield-like conditions. We're going to wait for more officers to come back. Ozaki and Murata are on the way back, so we can send four of them with the SWAT team. Because this is this could be quite serious. Ozaki and Kabilius as ranking officers. Shaw, Murata, and the SWAT team. Hopefully, by the time... If you're going to ask for backup, hopefully by the time you have... Subaki, Kemp and Van Dahl might be back. The Sands need help. I think we may ignore that call. There's a report. They didn't need backup. They caught the veteran. No one was hurt. We found a non-automatic non weapon. Let's sell it all. Report on homicide. Three new frames. So we now have six. We do need six. I guess it's possible that we could solve this case based on those six frames. John Keyless. No, presumably that's his husband. Someone banged on the door and my mother told me to hide under the bed and close my eyes and ears, be quiet as a mouse. I only heard muffled screams. When I got out from under the bed, I found my mother in the blood and I called the police. Okay, so it's his son. Young son, by the sound of it. Medical examiner, the fatal blow was struck by a blunt object to the head. The killer was standing behind the victim. Death was immediate and the body shows no other signs of violence. Mrs. Origi. I heard Fiona swearing with her brother. He'd come round again, begging for money at her doorstep. Then she started yelling at her son. He always sits there in front of the TV, playing these stupid games until he turns blue. And then my phone rang and I talked with my friend for an hour and a half. First responding officer. The door to the apartment was open when I came in. The boy was sitting in front of the TV, playing some game on the console. He didn't even turn in my direction. I think he was just in shock. His mother was laying dead right there in front of him. Peter Andre, the victim's brother. Yes, I went to help. I went to my sister to borrow some money. I lost my job, and the bills were piling up. I expected her to help, like I've helped her in the past, but she refused. I didn't kill her. We had a fight. We yelled at each other, but then I went home. I watched a movie I rented, and I went to bed. God, it's kind of hard to tell what these frames actually are. So it could be Peter Andre. It could be the sun. The sun did seem to just be quite casually. Uh, that would be the sun with Andre.
No, I, I don't think we have enough to solve that one yet. I realise when I'm trying to work those out I am quite quiet, so <laughs> I don't want to spend too long sitting there staring. I'm going to let the day end here. Sand's still up at 10, despite us ignoring that last call. So Yancey's quit. Shift A's looking still great as ever. Shift B is now down a man, but you know, compared to where we were a few episodes ago, we're looking pretty great. So, we're going to be moving on in the next episode. Until then, if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, we'll drop a couple of comments here and there, that'd be great. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.